Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, we're going to be finishing up the audio component of transforming my church's chapel into a chapel that can live stream. So let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. Link is in the description. So let's go ahead and recap what we've done so far. We have our system set up over here. The TV is connected over our wireless HDMI that's upstairs that we'll see here. And we have our system here. Um, we have a camera set up. And I'm actually looking, I was gonna use this camera, but the battery is dead. So I'm gonna use this tripod instead to go upstairs. Um, and then what else we got? We already got a computer that now is fast enough to live stream. Now all we gotta do is integrate our sound into the system and then we are good to go. And this is gonna be um, a lot simpler than most people would think to go through this. So let me go ahead and get my tripod upstairs and we're gonna continue upstairs. All right, we're upstairs right now and let's go ahead and I got a tripod set up here. And again, like I said, this is a very, very basic beginner camera. This is the one we actually started with from Walmart that was like for $150. And since we're talking about audio, some cameras, as you can see from here, we only have a HDMI line in. There is, that's for a memory card, and that's it. So we're dependent on this mic. And if we were just getting started, this would be fine. Let me adjust this here. But we don't want to do this because we added a sound system in here. We want to leverage that, especially since, I mean, the sound system is new. So let me get over here and the ceiling slants down, that's why I go like this. Let's turn the computer on. All right, so what we wanna do is pull from the sound from our system here. And like I said, this is our Behringer here. Now this, honestly, we actually have a super, super, super easy way of using this because this system actually can output sound over USB. But if we did not have that, and I think I, actually I brought the wrong cable, but for example, this is the type of cable that I actually use for my sound mixer. We have an XLR to a stereo connector. And obviously this is short. That's the reason I got it for my computer. So this wouldn't fit over here. But if we weren't using these mainline ends, you could plug these into, you could plug these into there and then it would give our sound out. Now you may have multiple um, main outs. You might have an aux out or something like that that you could use. Now in my situation, no, that wouldn't work. Now the other thing you could do is have this read two track record output over RCA out. Both of these will come out and they will convert into another stereo cable that goes into the computer and you would in this scenario, you will want to plug in on the line in on the computer, um, which normally is colored um, blue on the back. Red is for mic, blue is for line in on the back of the computer. So we could come out with red and white RCA cables, and this is the output. That's why this would work. And then this will plug into the system. If we weren't using the main outs to go to our speakers, I could come XLR out. They're also, on this one, I don't have the quarter inch outs here. Um, but what you could also do is have Uh, pretty much a quarter inch, and then this was the adapter I was looking for. It was right there. A quarter inch, and then convert it down into a stereo 
um, 3.5 millimeter that would also plug into the stereo, I mean the line in on the computer. So we just did one, two, three, and not these, but they were actually, this board doesn't have it, but we have quarter inch out as well. So there are multiple ways. So let me go ahead and turn the system on and I'm gonna walk through just a couple of these. I'll disconnect these and hook this up with my other cable just to show how it is. And I guess I need a mic up here too, so I can actually do this. All right, for our first cables, I have these RCAs connected. And then I have this adapter that actually came with an old pair of speakers that converts into a stereo and we just got to flip this back and hook this into the line in on the back of the computer let's flip these up so as you can see it would be this blue jack right here so let's go ahead and plug that in right there all right so now Let's go into OBS. And as you can see, we're already getting sound. Now, how do we do that? We're gonna come over here. So we're actually, excuse me, we're actually putting pulling sound from the actual capture device because we're matching to the UTAP, which is the same thing right here. So we don't wanna use that. We'll turn this off, and now we're not going to get any audio from the device at all. We want to capture audio from the sound system. So I have a mic set up here as well, too, so we can test this out. There's two ways you can do this. We can go right back to the same thing that we had, and for our custom audio, we could select the line in. And now, as you see, we're gonna be pulling from the house. So if I turn this microphone on real quick, you see our line there? Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. All right, as you see, we're getting audio now from the line in and I just turned the mic off because I don't want to scare the kids that are in the, <laughs> the learning center. So that's sound option number one. Again, we're going from this sound system had RCA out. We are running from there into an adapter to convert it to stereo and we're plugged into the line in. That's option number one. Let's go ahead and unplug that. Now, let me turn the system off so the system does not pop. Let's unplug our speakers here to simulate if we had another XLR output. So let's plug these in. All right, so now we're coming out XLR out of the mains. I unhooked the main speakers and we're going, this simulates if you have multiple XLR outs or aux out that you can configure. And we're converting that down into a stereo cable that is plugged into the line in. And as you can see, we are getting sound over here as well too. I'm still in the same microphone and we're getting captured sound as well too. Testing one, two. All right, so we went there to the yellow. So that's working as well too. And we didn't change anything from the settings. Our custom audio on the capture device is set to the line in. So we've done two different methods right there. Now, I, again, in this scenario, I do not have a quarter inch, but it will work the same way with that adapter. We will plug into the line in and very straightforward. So now let's go ahead and hook this back up and then we're gonna go with the easiest option, which is capturing audio over USB that's being sent to the computer already. All right, so our last one is our USB um, B, I believe, out. And that is going into our computer right there over USB. Now what we're gonna do here is the same thing. First, we can test this out because the computer is going to detect this mixer as our speakers out. My computer and mixer at home does the same thing. Even though we're connected to speakers here, you see that we have 
should have had another output. Make sure my cable is not loose. So. Okay. All right, we're connected right here. Let's go ahead and just move this just in case this is not registering. All right, there we go. So you heard that our sound is connected. USB audio codec is being detected. And now you can see our system is pointing. Our computer speakers are now, is now considered this mic, which this can work well if you're trying to play something in here, but we don't want to do this in this scenario. So we're going to change this back to our speakers that are here. And we want just to capture sound. So now we're going to go to the same settings. Scroll down to the bottom. And as you see, now we're using our custom audio of USB audio codec, which is the mixer coming over USB. So now let's turn the mic on. And there we go. There is sound again coming into the system. And I'm talking law low now because I'm back connected to the speakers here. So that is how we can get sound. Me personally, if you have the option of going over USB, that's the easiest because, I mean, it's one cable. You don't have to worry about adapters, all this other stuff, and it's all digital and it's being handled that way. But if you don't have that option, we went over um, RCA out, and that's normally set to a tape out. That's what it says on this mixer. So that's normally used, I mean, you can hook the old-fashioned audio in this way, but then there's um, the audio out, which is the mix out, which is normally if you were still using, um, God forbid, a tape recorder, CD recorder, um, or anything like that, you can pull the audio that way and just convert it over into the system. We did the XLR to stereo connection that connected over to our line in. We also could have used a... a um, aux out but again this board does not have this but you would do like a quarter inch you can do two quarter inches normally if they're left and right channels if they're separated and then they merge into one with a y adapter and then you can put some quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter adapter and connect it to the line in on the computer as well now and we also were capturing audio from the camera going over our capture device as well if we wanted to now, with all this being said, even though we connected everything here to the computer, you could, if this camera actually supported it, but it doesn't, this could have captured everything, set OBS, your capture device, I mean, capture software, streaming software into whatever to only point to your capture device. And if we had an external mic on this camera, like my other um, Sony camcorder or, or higher end camcorders, you could have come all of your audio out of here directly into the camera and then the capture device would send in video and audio to your computer. We could have done that if we had the camera that supported it, but we don't. And in this scenario, it's honestly is closer just to come from here into the system since they're so close together instead of running cables all the way there and then back. So that is it. Let me put my computer back up so it doesn't pull out over the place and I'm yanking on the cable here all right so that's it so pretty much we have now full audio full video and a system that is capable of live streaming here inside of our chapel so what I'm going to do is cut over to my home setup and we're going to go through the price of what it costs to do everything and let's update that just to see what the budget is if you were trying to do something like that all right, folks, so let's go ahead and look at all the parts and everything that we've purchased to transform our chapel into the chapel that now can live stream. What we spent was around $389.97 on the upgrade. That was including the memory, the capture device, CPU, and motherboard. We spent $175 on the wireless HDMI transmitter and receiver that we recently reviewed, and the video is right there at the top.
We also spent around $36 in miscellaneous HDMI cables, audio cables, and USB cables that we just recently went over that we had to use for connecting our audio in multiple ways. You could have simplified that. Like I said, in our setup, we just used a USB, which was really easy to do, but the adapters, um, the RCA to stereo adapter, or just the XLR to stereo adapter, or a quarter inch to stereo adapter that just was lumped into that price. So you could probably not um, drop that down to maybe $6 if you were only gonna get one cable. Spent $70 on a tripod. I will add the price of the camera, which you can't even get anymore, but I'm gonna put in the price of the Canon R800 because that's the, the equivalent of this price range. That's around $250 and then Without even adding our sound system upgrade, which was the Behringer board, as well as two powered speakers, um, the price before that was $920.97. Again, we're still under $1,000 being able to live stream. And that was also contingent on the fact we had a computer that we were able to upgrade. Now, if you needed to do a complete system from, from ground up, you would probably have to add an additional $400 to that price. So you're right at around $1,300. But still, to have a brand new system built from the ground up for live streaming, camera, sound system, everything, you're at $1,300. I mean, that you can't beat that price. But let's just go back. So we're at $920.97 for just the parts of everything. And if we added our sound system into that price, we're at $1,716.97. So again, even if we had a brand new sound system, brand new camera, brand new computer, everything, we're right at around $2,000 to get all of that done. So I think that is about it, folks. So um, what I'm gonna do is I might splice in a little bit of video or an example, or actually, let me just do this. In the, in the description, I will add a link to a sample of the live stream of what I'm doing from the church so you can see what it looks like. And um, honestly, this series of videos is the one that if you know of any other churches who are still struggling to do the live streaming thing, here's a good example that they can watch from beginning to end of all the things that will go into place. Because again, our chapel is kind of similar to so many churches. I've had so many people reach out like, hey, this is like the same layout as our church and this, this, and this, and hopefully this will help. So please share this playlist, not just this video, the playlist of all these videos of Transform Our Chapel so that it could help any other churches who may be having um, kind of slow or haven't done, well, I want to say kind of slow, but haven't made the change to live streaming because this isn't going away folks. And plus anyway, this is a good um, ministry tool to reach other people outside of the four walls of your church. And hopefully this helps. So I think that is about it. I will have a link in the description to everything that we put into the chapel on how to do this. Hopefully that can help you out there. And so you don't have to keep searching all over the place. Here's a consolidated list of everything that you need. And I think that is about it. I wanna thank the patrons who made this video possible. Their names are on the screen right now and you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month where you help us train other media ministries all over the world. Thank you patrons, I really appreciate it. And I think that's about it. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry this is AJ, folks. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next video later.